In this video, I'm going to suggest five tips for setting up a training environment using the ML Agents Toolkit in Unity. This is not an introduction to ML Agents itself. If you are looking for an introduction, please check out these previous videos that I made. As an example, I'm going to use this scene from my previous video where the agent is this human character and his objective is to find and catch the runaway dog. If this topic is of interest to you, please do subscribe to hear about new videos as I make them. If you've used ML Agents, you may already know some of these tips, but I hope there is something in this video that will help you. The first tip is to build up your training environment in a Unity prefab. In my case, I created this prefab called Dog Finder Area. That allows you to duplicate the training environment as many times as you want. That's important because when you are training, you can have multiple environments running and training at the same time to speed up the training process. So, for example, I have eight duplicate training environments that I created just by duplicating the prefab in the hierarchy and by giving each one a different position. Of course, in the script for your agent, you should have some randomization, probably in the on episode begin function, so that the training episodes are each a bit different. Also, by leveraging Unity's prefab mechanism, if you decide to make changes to the environment, those changes can easily be propagated to all the duplicates. For example, suppose I want to add another house to the environment. All I need to do is make the change in one of the prefabs so in this example, I am enabling a house object that had been disabled. That change overrides the prefab itself. Then select the prefab, select the object within the prefab that has been changed, and apply that change to the prefab to propagate that change to all the environments. The second tip is to prototype your training environment using free or inexpensive assets. This is probably pretty obvious, but the Unity Asset Store has so many environments and objects available that it can be very quick to build a training environment or any game environment for that matter. For example, I used houses from the Simple Town Asset from Cinti Studios, which I already happen to have purchased and which only costs about $5. The fences are from the low poly fence pack, which is free. The human model is free from Real Illusion, which has a number of nice human models, including a few free ones. The dog is this Corgi model from the asset store, which is the only asset that I actually bought specifically for this example. I got the dog to walk among waypoints using my own asset, the NPC Populator, by creating an animator controller for the dog animations that came with the Corgi model. I actually hadn't realized that my NPC populator works for dog NPCs, so I guess that's a new selling point. The third tip is to start with a very simple environment, but with the capability to make it incrementally more complex. As an example, I found that an effective way to train in this environment was to first turn off all the houses so the human has the simpler problem of finding the dog with no obstructions. After the human had been trained for that, I continued the training with the houses restored. That seemed to work better than training in the more complex environment from the start. The fourth tip may be a bit less obvious, but I found it difficult at first to really see what was going on in training sessions and was not sure of the best place to put the camera to have a good vantage point. What I ended up doing was to set up multiple cameras to show the action from different perspectives. This is easily done by setting the viewport rectangle of the cameras to show them all at once. So one approach is to set the width and height of each camera to be 0.5 rather than the usual value of 1, and to set the X and Y values of the cameras to create a grid of four cameras as I've done here. Another trick that I used 
is that sometimes it may be useful to see sort of a mini-map that shows the location of the moving objects even if the details of the object cannot be seen. I accomplish this by adding colored sphere objects as part of the human and dog objects a bit above the objects themselves. Then in this map view, the spheres appear as dots to show where the objects are. I hide the spheres in the other views by defining a layer called Minimap, putting the spheres in that layer and configuring the other cameras not to show the Minimap layer. So this gives me four camera views. One camera follows the dog, one follows the human, one has a bird's eye view over the environment, and finally there is the Minimap view where these dots show the positions of the human and the dog. The fifth tip is to design in flexibility in perceptions, actions, and rewards so that experiments can be run with variations on these. To experiment with different perceptions, in my example, ray perception sensors are used, and I can experiment with different ray lengths and different numbers of rays. I also use a collider around the human as kind of a sensor for detecting whether the human collides with another object. I can experiment with the radius of that collider. To experiment with different actions, as explained in the last video, all the actions are implemented as animation parameters that control the movement of the human. I experimented with using different parameters which also required having a couple of alternate animator controllers to use. And I also experimented with whether it would work better to tweak the values by adding or subtracting a small increment versus setting the values to a choice of a few discrete values. To experiment with different rewards, there are many options. And all are implemented with simple lines of code in the agent script. Of course, the main reward is based on the human finding the dog, but I experimented with some intermediate rewards, such as penalties for the passage of time, colliding with obstacles, or getting stuck in one place without advancing. I will talk more about the experiments in a future video that will focus on the training process. I hope these tips were helpful. Please let me know what you think in the comments. And if you would like to see more videos on humanoid AI in Unity, please do subscribe to this channel.